Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you my live paper crafting class on a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday rather than a Wednesday. Um, my kids have school off this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and lots of things are going on. So I thought, you know what, let's just do it today. That way I don't have to make them be quiet at home tomorrow. So I hope you're all okay with that switch and thank you for remembering to show up. It's so fun to craft with other people. Um, it's so much fun that you're here commenting away. If you're live um, with me on YouTube or Facebook, make sure that at least on YouTube, you're logged into your Google account so that you can chime in during the live. Otherwise, just sit back and watch. If you're watching after the live is done, you can comment in a different section. On Facebook, you can comment in the same place, either way. I'm glad that you're all with me. I also wanna welcome Lisa Marshall on Facebook and Trisha Josephs on YouTube. Those two ladies are my moderators and they help me out answering questions while the live is going on. So thank you gals for coming again, love you. Um, today is Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. It's 11 a.m., so that kind of helps those people who are watching at different times realize if they're live or not. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a few different ink blending tips and techniques. Um, I'm going to be using the Translucent Floral, Floral Bundle. Hello, Terry from Florida. Um, the Translucent Floral Bundle, which includes the stamp set and the coordinating dies. I'm also going to be using blending brushes, daubers, Wink of Stella, and the new paper called Delightful Flora that they brought into the online exclusives um, section of the online store so that you can get some beautiful paper that goes with this, the stamp sets and dies. Um, and then of course other coordinating products, tools, and things like that. If you see something that I mentioned is in my favorite extras section of my website, you can go to my website at stampyourartout.com, click on shop, go down to where it says my favorite extras, and then you can find these items that I mentioned. Um, okay, what else do I need to talk about before we get started? Prize drawing, we're gonna do a prize drawing at the end. Um, and so if you're commenting during the live, you get entered into the prize drawing, so yay. Um, what else? I think that's it. We do a prize drawing at the, um, at the end for both the, the live that was previous and for the current live. So if you are commenting after the live is done, you also, within that week of the live happening, you also get a chance to get in on another prize drawing. So Edith from Germany, oh my gosh, thank you for joining. I know that it's evening time there or close to evening. So I appreciate that. And um, I think we're gonna go over to the supplies and measurement sheet. So let's do that. I'm gonna bring up my sheet on the computer screen here and we'll just scoot on over. You can see a picture of the card that I'm gonna create. It's um, a beautiful card. I, I just love the colors that, that I've chosen for this. And they're nice and bright and beautiful and what a perfect like a wedding card that, I mean, you could also make the sentiment say different things, but um, this is definitely totally appropriate, appropriate as a wedding card. Um, I've, I'm using thick and regular white cardstock because the regular white cardstock, the basic white, is also going to become a layer for the card. And that's the only cardstock colors. We're adding colors ourselves with inks. Um, like I said, we're going to do some ink blending techniques. We're also going to be doing um, our own envelope for this card because it's not the usual size card. You can see all the other supplies that are listed there. If I bring my mouse over the top of these supplies, they are clickable. So when you access this PDF, which will be available on my blog post connected to the video, you can download the PDF and then you can click on those different um, items and it will take you to purchasing that product. Ah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, the blog post will go live um, shortly after the video. So at 12.15, right now it's 11ish. Um, a.m. Central Time, so a little over an hour, the blog post connected to the video will go live. There's a link for that blog post right now in the description of the YouTube video. Um, I will transfer that link over to the Facebook Live after the live is done. Thank you. Such sweet messages from all of you. My hand is healing. Yes, I appreciate your well wishes. In fact, we're just going to go to the desktop now and bring that hand in. It's not as grotesque looking today, so I thought, you know what, we can't just keep covering it up with a Band-Aid. 
this is um, what how long after the surgery maybe three weeks after the surgery but I had for those of you that don't know I had um, my my tendon that you know this part here that you can kind of see it on my hands the tendon that goes across your finger here well here you can see it here this kind of got off kilter because the the cartilage or the um, the band of cartilage that holds your tendon in place it ruptured I I guess my muscles are stronger than the cartilage and I was stretching my hand and it tore in the middle <laughs> I was trying to reach two things at the same time and so um, yeah don't don't reach too hard when you're older so this ruptured and this little tendon just kept going off to one side and um, so what they did is they went in surgically and they stitched up that cartilage and the tendon is in line but I'm still having trouble um, stretching my my hand into a full fist still so it's you know it's still got some healing to do but we are going to physical therapy so hello from England yay Ali nice to see you also or see your comment I should say yay I'm seeing so many familiar names to you guys this is so much fun Nancy all right if you can't stay for the live but you're just checking in I appreciate that hope you can come back and watch it later Peggy's like ouch yeah, it, it's, you know what, it didn't hurt that much when it, well, I mean, it hurt, but it didn't hurt as much as, um, like, the physical therapy to get this back into place. I have to kind of stretch my hand, and it's, that's the part that <laughs> hurts. Hey, Kelly, thank you. Thank you for the hugs. So we've got two different kinds of cardstock here. I have the thick, um, and if you kind of go like this, you can see that it's a little bit tougher to get into an arch. And then we have the regular, which is a little more wobbly. So if you're trying to figure out the difference between the two, just, you know, start bending it and that will give you a better idea of which one is which. Um, I store mine separately too because the thick basic white is great for card bases. So on that note, we're going to turn our cardstock in the longer direction here. And we're going to cut at, I'm going to extend the arm of my trimmer here, we're going to cut it at six and a half inches. Six and a half, let me look. Yes, yeah, six and a half inches. And then we're going to hang on to that piece. This is going to be a good piece to use later on. And then we're going to um, cut in this direction at nine and a half. And hang on to this piece because we're going to use that as a card layer. <laughs> it did slow me down, Roxanne, but it didn't keep me out. You're right. I, I tell you just, you know, as soon as I got my hand because um, this is my dominant hand, as soon as I got it out of like the, the, it was kind of like a cast where I could barely move anything except my thumb, I was crafting again. I was using my fingers as much as I could. I know, I, there's something about crafting that just made me feel better. And uh, yeah, anyways, so now we're going to score down the center of this. So we're scoring nine and a half inches at five, uh, four and three quarter inches. Okay, so we're making a larger than normal card. Stampin' Up! does not sell envelopes that are this size. Okay, so we're gonna need to create our own envelope. We're gonna set that aside for now. Let's just use our bone folder and give that a crease and then we'll set it off to the side. Okay, next let's bring in our basic white regular cardstock. This time I'm going to trim at four and three quarter inches. I'm just gonna make um, a layer here. In fact, I'm gonna do a couple layers. So four and three quarters by six and a half. And I'm making them the exact same size. I suppose I could have cut it the same way. <laughs> That's okay, when you're live, you, you can't really edit, you just keep going um, <laughs> by six and a half. So four and three quarter by six and a half. I have two layers here that are the same dimensions, but they're not together. So they're gonna become layers on the card, but these layers are gonna get trimmed down a little bit later. Right now I want them to be the same size as the card. Now I have all these scraps, right? And remember I said, hang on to this one. This one is gonna become our, I think this is the one. Um, nope, I'm gonna do a two inch one instead, I think. Let me look at the card. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna to have to change some things on the PDF. 
<laughs> so I may have to make that blog post go live a little bit later because I'm seeing some mistakes. Uh, it is not two inches by six and a quarter. It's one and a half by six and a quarter. Okay, so we're trimming off a quarter of an inch on the skinny one. This is gonna become a front layer on the card. Okay, so imagine this is the card. So we'll keep that over there. All of the rest of these now are scraps. And these scraps can be stamped on. So let's set that over there and let's start doing some fun stamping. Okay, I have got some beautiful color inks that I'm gonna bring in. Pretty Peacock, Parakeet Party, Lemon Lolly, Calypso Coral, Fresh Freesia, and Berry Burst. And the reason why I chose these colors is because they are recommended colors to go with the designer paper. So when you get a designer pack of paper, and let me just zoom out a bit here, when you get a designer pack, you flip it over to the back side and you get a listing of the colors that coordinate. So you can see here that those colors are within that description. Now let's look at the papers. We have some gorgeous papers. This is the one that I used for the DIY envelope um, that's photographed in the blog post, the one that you see on the PDF. This could make a great envelope too. It's not real loud. This one could also, but it's louder. So I might use that more to cut up and put on fronts of cards. But you can see the back sides of all these sheets have more like a solid color that's like a watercolor wash look. Very pretty. Now there are dies that coordinate with the stamp set, but they do not cut out any of the designs on this paper, just so you know. Um, I, I have hovered them over the top. This is the set of translucent floral dies. And yeah, if you place them over the images, I have not found any that I can actually die cut. They're slightly bigger than the florals that you'd think would be the right size, but again, they're, they're not. Okay, so, but they coordinate with the stamps. So now let's bring in the stamps. Let's set these off to the upper corner again, because that's where I'll grab them. Let's bring in the stamp set. This is the stamp set. It's called Translucent Florals. And here, I'm gonna zoom in now. You can see that you have that um, two-tone effect. That's because this is what's called a distinctive stamp set. Um, I don't know where it says that on there, but it's, um, it's got the look of shading within the stamp. Uh, so you get the dark, you get the light, just by stamping it with one time in one color. And I'm gonna demonstrate that. It's, a, it's an amazing um, look that you get just from stamping once. Thanks, Lori. So you can see the dies here, if we compare, you have dies that coordinate with the stamp images. So all of these images can be cut out with these frame types of dies. Even this one here, we'll cut out this one. So lots of fun um, shapes. You also have um, other dies. You have these petal dies that create flowers. Like you could, you could die cut this from a beautiful sheet of designer paper, maybe like um, one of these, and then die cut it again and layer them together so you have a six petal flower. Um, we've got stems, we've got insides of flowers, we've got tiny little petaled flowers, we've got a couple leaves. So lots to design with. The, um, I'm just going to keep the dies over here because we're going to be doing some die cutting today. Let's bring in two of the greenish colors. We're going to use the Parakeet Party. Good morning, TJ. We're going to use Parakeet Party along with Pretty Peacock. And one of my favorite stamps from that set is this multi-leaf branch, okay? You love it, Betty? I do too. This, you know, when this stamp set came out, I was a little worried thinking, our inks, because they can be juicy or, you know, they're kind of touchy as far as how much ink you can put on them. But these stamps work incredibly easy and they're, they're not difficult to use at all. I'm tapping on the top of my pad. I'm getting some ink on the surface of my stamp. And now what I'm gonna to do to get some um, dark green or pretty peacock, I should say, in there, 
is I'm going to grab a dauber. So I store my daubers. This is one of those little plugs for some uh, something in my favorite extras. I have this wonderful dauber case that I got from the Country Hive, and I highly recommend getting that if you want to organize your colors. So I just tap up and down. I have also labeled mine. I think my labeler is in my favorite extras too. Now I'm going to come up the stem. So I've darkened the stem of my stamp, and I'm just going to go a little bit up and into the leaves. And you might be wondering, why such a dark color? Well, um, I'm going to show you the paper again. So let's just going to go up into these little areas here. And don't worry about the color mixing because you're using the dark color second. So we started with the light color, and now we're doing the darker color on top and going up and into the leaves. So I've got the base of those leaves colored. We'll set that over here because we're going to use it again. Because it's been sitting here for a while, I'm going to now exhale onto my stamp. Maria from Puerto Rico, woohoo! Thank you for joining in. It's so fun to see like the different areas of the world that you're all from. So thank you for commenting. Even when you're from the US, it's just amazing all the different people that are joining. So comment away. So I'm exhaling onto, I'm making a noise while I do it so you can hear me, um, onto my stamp. And we're going to stamp it down into this strip. And it does fit. <laughs> I checked it when I made my first card. Okay, so we've got that. And isn't that gorgeous? Now let me show you the designer paper again. So if you didn't catch this, this is the one image on your stamps where you might want to do kind of a two-toned effect. Do you see how they've done that with the leaves? You've got this multi-green um, look to the leaves here, don't we? Okay, so let's do that again. Let's use our, I just mounted a couple leaves onto this one here. Um, we can bring them closer together. You know what I did? I laid them down on my paper like this because I wanted to make the most use of my paper. And I just kind of put them where I wanted them and then I grabbed my block and I grabbed them like that. So now we can ink them up the same way. So we're gonna tap lightly and we're gonna grab our peacock ink again and our dauber. You can certainly clean off your daubers in between. You can do that with blending brushes. Um, you don't have to assign them a specific color. It's just, I'm lazy, so I don't wanna clean and wait. <laughs> so yeah, that's me. Uh, so we're just gonna do the same thing where we're going up and in to the leaves like that. And on this one, you could pick either side. I really don't know what the base of that leaf is and what the uh, tip of it is. <laughs> That one was a difficult one for me to figure out. Okay, so we'll stamp that one onto our paper. And now we can fill in the rest. And when you fill in the rest, well, let's just do a couple more. Let's just do them all. Why not? Um, let's do a tiny little flower. This is the little baby flower, like a bud. We're going to do that in Fresh Freesia. I think I'm going to put these inks behind me so that they um, can still stay open in case I need them. Oh, and you know what? That's a little too juicy. I'm just gonna stamp it again. That one looks better. I got little speckles in that one. Okay, and so yeah, we're setting them behind. Okay, and we'll set the inks back here too. Let's take our Berry Burst color next. Such a vibrant color pink. We'll ink this stamp up in the very burst and basically I'm just imitating some of the flower colors that are in the paper. And we'll stamp that down. Gorgeous! Okay, next. And you could do that multicolor effect with daubers on them if you'd like to. Let's do some of the Calypso Coral flowers. So stamp that down once stamp it down again and if i hadn't have done that one i could do it one more like if it wasn't so splotchy i could do it one more time it was just a juicy area of the ink pad but that plus two more of these leaves is what you'd need okay so you could you could basically get them all onto one strip as i have done here if you want to save on paper you know just use one of your strips and stamp them all on there okay let's close up 
Calypso. I don't think I need the Calypso anymore, but I need to bring back and bring in Lemon Lolly, Parakeet Party, and my Pretty Peacock. All right, the rest of these inks we'll just take and put away. Now it's time to do some die cutting. So let's grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I've also got some uh, 3M post-it tape and we'll zoom out a bit here. And we're gonna lay down these pieces onto our cutting mat. So we've got some layers here. We've got our platform, number one, number two, the die adapter, number three, the cutting mat. And you want your scratchiest one on the bottom. I'm just gonna grab some post-it tape. And just a little bit is all you need. And then you start, and you could use like post-it um, notes, you could use washi tape, but yeah, you're gonna start um, cutting out a few of these. So let's line them up. And I try to layer it over the top. Um, you know what, let's do it. Let's do it so that this tape is in a different spot because that way we don't have to run our machine through too many times here. There, now we can put this one over here. So you want some space in between your images on your paper. What's your favorite color, you guys? Roxanne likes the pretty peacock color. I always think of it as a blue and then, or no, a green. No, what do I think of it as now? I don't know, it's a cross between both of them. But I remember the other day it was brought, oh, a blue. I typically think of it more on the blue side, but then when you use it with the way we used it here, it takes on more of that green look, right? Because Pretty Peacock paired with Pool Party and um, is it Lost Lagoon? They're stunning. And I think of Lost Lagoon and, um, and uh, Pool Party as blues, but they all have a greenish blue hue to them, don't they? The two tones are fun. You could do that with the flowers, absolutely, you guys. I just kind of wanted to stick more with what I was seeing on the paper, since we're gonna be using the paper for the envelope. You could use a totally different kind of paper for the envelope. Designer paper is great for creating envelopes with because you have um, a pattern, and the strongest pattern can be on the inside, and the, the, less strong, the least strongest one <laughs> could be on the uh, outside. You don't want something that's got a strong pattern in both areas because, of course, you're going to be addressing the envelope to mail it, typically, unless you're handing the uh, envelope to somebody. Okay, so we're going to cut those. I know I can't fit them all on there, but we're going to go through one more time anyways. And Rachel's using her right hand, you guys, just not that finger. <laughs> it's improving. Okay, now we gotta take these little guys off. And if you're worried about the tape clinging too much, just poke the image behind to get it through. And then you can take the, the tape off later, um, off of the paper later. So just push it backwards. Here's one where we gotta take it off first because it's definitely on there. Okay, so now let's grab these dies and set it up one more time to die cut a few more. We want that really, really big leaf, uh, collection of leaves, a little branch there. So we'll take all of these. And you know where I set my um, tape? I stick it right up here on my <laughs> stamp and cut and emboss machine because you can use them more than once. You don't have to throw them away right away. They're definitely strong pieces of tape that are ready to go again. It's like a big giant post-it note. Okay, so I need to get this one for sure. And I would be cutting more, but I have some that are already pre-cut. So let's just get this guy. Let's do that one. When you line up the dies, you wanna line them up so that the edge of your image is right up next to the edge, inside edge of the die. Okay, we'll put the plate on top. We'll crank it through. Another tip I have for you is um, if you have a flat die, don't aim a flat edge in, um, or you're gonna feel a real major bump when you crank it through. Kind of angle your pieces as they go in. Pretty, so, so pretty. 
Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, let's take all of these pieces that we're no longer using and put them in the table behind me. <laughs> I'll clean that up later. Still need to keep those inks out. And now we're going to bring in some ink blending tools. Let's set these over here where my other ones are that I've cut already. Okay, some ink blending tools. My favorites, well, one of my favorites, is the blending brushes. And I've got them in these Tailored Expressions boxes that I got from Stampin' Storage. So they just fit in like that. And you can put about four of them in there if you kind of, you know, go back and forth. This is also in my favorite extras. So, and you can rinse them out. You don't have to have one assigned for each each color like I have, but this is me. I guess I like to buy a lot. <laughs> All right, so we did one ink blending already, and that was with the daubers directly onto stamps. This is the second ink blending that I wanted to show you, and now we're gonna take and use our grid paper as a little protected surface, and we'll bring in our strip to just kind of share where that's gonna sit. It's gonna be about a half of an inch from the bottom of the card. And we're gonna have our flowers layered on here. So let's start with the yellow, which is the lemon lolly color. Let me open that up, grab our blending brush, and swirl it around like this. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit, get a little closer on this, okay? Oh, thank you, Shelly. <laughs> Shelly is from Moscow, Indiana, and she gave me a nice compliment. Appreciate it. I'm glad that you enjoy watching. Okay, so if this is going to go here and my color yellow is going to be on the outside edges, I can really start, um, you know, blending out pretty far on this. So let's, let's just kind of go out as far as possible. <laughs> In fact, we can go right to the edge of the cardstock, okay? Let's go right to the edge of the cardstock. And we're using the lightest color, so the benefit of that is that you don't really have to test it on your paper, your scrap paper, your grid paper. Um, you can go directly right onto your cardstock because you're not going to do a ton of, you know, alarming um, coloring if you have a lot of that light ink, right? Um, okay, so again, swirling to catch a lot of it up there and then bringing it down onto your cardstock here. And again, the strip is going right through here. So if you're really worried about it, you can put, you can start with your color on here and swirl and then move outside of where that strip is going to go. Okay. We'll do a little bit more through here. And a swirling motion really gives that color a nice smooth look. You can do, you know, other motions with your hands when you're using blending, um, blending brushes. You can certainly you know, do a, a swipe back and forth. Uh, with the darker inks, you're gonna get more of a scratchier look. Now we're gonna move to the middle color. Actually, let's do this too. Let's do this one at the same time. On this one, we're gonna go ahead and do some coloring from the bottom right. And again, you notice I went right onto the paper, but with the darker colors, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it up a bit, okay? So I'm going right at the edge and going straight down on top of the cardstock because I'm not too worried about the bright boldness of the color. Okay, and then with the other corner, do the same thing. Go directly. Lemon Lolly is such a beautiful yellow, you guys. I, I give credit to the Lemon Lolly color for the amazing photos that I got of this card. When, <laughs> when you see the blog post or when you see the PDF, I think the Lemon Lolly really brightened up and made those photos just glow. I was just amazed when I saw it. Okay, next color. Let's do the um, Parakeet Party Green. So Parakeet Party, and yes, you can press right onto the head of this too. I'm just kind of hesitant with my fingers. <laughs> but yeah, if you press right onto the head of it, you're going to pick up the most amount of ink. And now that we've got some color on here, we're going to blend in 
from the corner. Again, this is a very light color. I'm not too worried about any kind of scratchy look to it when it comes onto the card. So there's that. Let's do a little bit over here. I think Parakeet Party, I know it's an in color, you guys. It's going to go away at the end of this, cat this annual catalog year, which is springtime. It's going to go bye-bye. But I think it's my favorite green. Yeah, my favorite green. It's just so bright and cheerful. Okay, and let's bring in this piece again and add our Parakeet Party where I want that to go here. So we're going to fill in more of this white space. You can see the darker the color, the more it has that, um, you can see the brush stroke a little bit more, right? So if that bothers you, you can take some of the color off and just do more repetitive movements to get the blending to come onto your cardstock. So we're gonna bring it this way a bit. And then we're gonna go over to this edge and add a little bit of green here, like that. And I think we'll just dip down a little bit into this zone of the card. Okay, and every once in a while, if you want to, you can take your paper and lay it on there and see if it's looking the way you want it to look. Okay, I'm gonna move this off to the side. And now we're using Parakeet Party. And I'm just showing you that we have different size brushes. You can use whatever size you want. We have regular size blending brushes and then we have these mini ones now. And the mini ones, um, some people feel they have more control with them, uh, feel like they can get into smaller areas with them. So with this color, watch how bold this is. So you see how dark that is? So I'm gonna actually brush off a little bit of the color before I come into my card, because then I get a softer, a slightly softer um, look than that dark darkness right there, okay? And we're gonna blend up and through here. And again, this is gonna be covered by this strip, so I'm not too worried about that. Plus, we're gonna have flowers coming in. So we'll just blend a little bit more through that green area there. Okay, and then on this piece, we're just gonna come into the corners a bit. And see what I'm doing? I'm starting off my paper and then coming in. Just barely tapped it. And that's deepening that green. It almost makes it look like a garden green um, color in my mind. I'm peeking at my finish card too. I want to make sure I do it sort of similar. Okay, so there's that one. Set these. Actually, I'm going to keep that ink because we're going to need to stamp some sentiments now. Let's do a couple sentiments. We've got the congratulations and the wishing you all the happiness in the world images. From that stamp set, where did I put it? There are a couple more also. You can um, choose the you're the best and happy birthday. So there's a few different choices in this stamp set um, if you do not want to make it a congratulations or a wedding card or whatever. On this strip, which is already cut to the six and a quarter inch width, so I know it's the perfect size, I'm going to stamp my congratulations right here in this bottom corner. And you know what? It doesn't look real full. I think I didn't ink up my paper enough, so, or my my stamp enough so I'm gonna just fix those edges a bit sometimes when you cut with the paper trimmer it presses a little bit like you get this little do you know what I'm talking about <laughs> it kind of indents on the side that you're pressing away from when you stamp let's do that again we'll stamp it down in the corner that's better it's still not the way I want it though I'm gonna I'm gonna trim one more <laughs> You know what, if I'm gonna make this card, I'm gonna make it right. But you have two sides of your paper, you guys. So if you mess up, you can always flip it over like I did. And then, you know, this is scrap for stamping on later. <laughs> Cause I obviously messed up two sides. Okay, let's try that again. One more time, drum roll, ink up. Okay, the stamp is full. I think I just didn't press down on each side. Don't rock your stamps, you guys. Oh, much better. There we go. And then this one's going to go on this paper and it's going to go up a little high because we're going to have flowers towards the bottom. So let's stamp that right in the middle. 
And there's that one. Okay, all the stamping has been done. The next thing before we assemble is we're gonna do a little bit of ink splattering. We're gonna bring in a tool called the Wink of Stella brush. This is like a shimmer paint um, in a paintbrush ready to go. So you just pop off the cap and you've got all of that beautiful, it's kind of like a champagne color ink on there. Gorgeous. And I'm gonna use my um, bone folder. You can see it's got some shimmer paint on it already because what I did is I went like this and I just put a little bit of splattering of ink onto the surface of the paper. So let's hold that up so you can see. And it's really hard to see in this light. I don't know if you can see. Oh yes, you can if I tip it. You can see a few of the speckles. <laughs> if I zoom in, maybe that will work. Does that help any? Makes it a little more blurry, doesn't it? Let's just tap a few more on there. Oops. It's shimmery, you guys. I don't want to shimmer it up too much more. It's on there. So now <laughs> let's assemble our card. So we're just going to set that over there. This one I'm not going to do any shimmer paint on, but it's going to go on the inside of the card. So let's work with this one first. This one here, I'm going to cap this for now. We're going to use it again. This one for now is going to be our first layer and we're going to trim because if you, if you notice here, let's let it go up against some white cardstock. Do you see how dark this is on the edge there? I don't want that look. I want it to be a smooth transition. So I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch from each side. And now all those really, really dark edges are going to disappear. And I'm going to be a happy camper. <laughs> one more. So one from each side. And now that should bring your cardstock down to six and a quarter by four and a half. We're going to do that with the other one. Okay, this will go in here. See how it's nice and smooth now? Like there's no distinct end. The same thing on this one. Do you see how this is really, 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 really dark there? So we're going to do a trimming technique on that one. And I really want to be careful when I hold it because that shimmer paint is still drying. So we'll do that on all four edges. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some ribbon onto our card base. So let's add the inside, then let's add the ribbon. With this piece, you can use either um, seal or multi-purpose liquid glue or tear and tape, whatever floats your boat. We're going to use seal. And some of you were saying how impressed you were with how I used it with my left hand last week. I am not left-handed, but it was really fun to see that I could do that. <laughs> I had been doing that for a couple weeks, just using my left hand. I should do it again. Okay, so that's going to get stuck on there like that, centered on the inside of the card. This is the outside, but we're going to, oh, actually, we're going to tie the ribbon on this piece here. So let's bring in one of our embellishment accessory type um, products, and this is our Calypso Coral Braided Linen Trim. We're going to grab about, I think it was 16 inches. Yeah, 16 inches. So we'll take and cut that off using my scissors that I just assigned to ribbon cutting. My other one that doesn't have a ribbon on it, I use for trimming up paper. Paper can dull your scissors pretty quickly. So if you want to use it to trim fabric or ribbon, which is what ribbon is, right, then you'll want to save um, a scissors just for trimming ribbons. That's what I do. I'm going to tie a little knot here. Look, I can tie a knot even, you guys. Okay, come through there. Maybe. Oh, I can't tie a knot. Let me try it one more time. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. And we could even do a, a little ribbon saving too and just do a little knot of it. But, um, 
little tiny little knot and stick it under there, but I wanted the whole look of the ribbon going around. So let's do that one more time, Rachel. You can do it. You can do it. Just don't worry about the middle finger. It'll move. It's not going to bust open anymore. Yay, I did it. Okay, so now I'm tightening that little knot and I'm going to shift it over. I'm bending my cardstock a bit and we're just going to shift this over to the left. And then I'm going to stick this piece on top with dimensionals. So let's bring in our adhesive caddy again and grab our dimensionals, this one here, and stick one in each corner. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's alter them. Let's kind of stagger them up and down along this path here. We'll do five all together, but I don't want them to be right up close to the um, top edge because I want to be able to tuck some flowers under there. Okay. What were you feeling frustrated with? Oh, I just missed the comment. Shoot. But somebody answered it. Yay. I'm glad. <laughs> Second time is a charm. You're right. So this is going to get stuck on here. I'm going to use my grid paper as a guide. I'm just going to lay it down here so I can see a couple squares up on this side, a couple squares up on this side. And that's where I want to lay my cardstock strip. Don't worry about going over the ribbon because right now the dimensionals are a little higher up. Now I can shift my ribbon down so it's just peeking out a bit like that. So you can see just a little hint of that um, Calypso coral color. I just love it, love it, love it. Now I'm going to grab uh, one of these glue dots and we're going to do some manipulating to get a glue dot underneath the knot part of our ribbon. So now the ribbon will stay in place, okay? It's not moving. Another thing that I want to do is I want to trim up the ends of my ribbon and then I'm going to fray it a bit like that. And it just, it's so fun because it's braided. So you can literally take these apart, these little things of ribbon here, this roll of ribbon, and you'll, you could have probably like eight strands of, of twine <laughs> if you wanted to get a lot of bang for your buck. It would take some time, but so there's that. Woohoo! And now this is going to get set on top of our card front with more dimensionals. Let me find those again in my table. So we'll put those on there and the dimensionals go on after you've done the ribbon because then you can hold that ribbon in place with your dimensional. So that way it's held in place in the middle where that knot was, I should say, where the knot was on the front, but then you're also holding it here so that it doesn't move from these spots as far either, right? Stabilizing it. Okay, this will go on the front. And then the next step is to do a little bit of coloring, one more ink blending technique, because I said I was going to do three. So this will go on the front like this. Here's a little um, thing to remember too. We're going to do a, a do-it-yourself envelope towards the end of the video. That's the last thing we're going to do. And we're doing it last because if you do your envelope beforehand with the card base, but then you put layers onto your card, your envelope um, might be too tight after you get all the layers on. So we're doing the envelope last, okay? A reversible tweezer as the third finger. Yeah, I could, but I really want my, I want my finger to start moving. <laughs> you guys are so good to me, by the way. I love all the tips that you share with me. I learn from you. It's, it's amazing. I, I love that you um, connect with me and give me ideas. Okay, so let's bring in those pretty flowers that we cut and the leaves and we need let's see what did I say we needed two sets of these so here's my second set and we needed two calypso coral flowers so here's another one I think I like this one better I cut a bunch of these you guys I need two of those 
and I think we're ready. So now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what we're gonna do on these pieces. <laughs> One of the hardest things to do with my, um, with my hand not being workable and strong is to take jars, uh, jar tops off of jars to unscrew things. Um, anytime I have to unscrew something, I have to reach reach out to my husband and say, can you please help me? Um, yeah, the jars, the caps on little tiny tubes of stuff. I'm being really picky about where I color because you can see at an angle where someone has added Wink of Stella. And look at the difference here between these two flowers. Do you see that one is blended more than the other? When you use a Wink of Stella onto um, a stamped image that is water-based, this is water-based ink, it actually grabs some of that ink that's underneath and wettens it, right? Wet, wets it down so that you are um, blending color. So be careful if you're using real bold colors. In fact, kind of scratch it onto, your, onto the surface of your grid paper before you move on to another color so that you don't get, um, like I didn't want to get that Calypso into the green, right? So we'll do that with the leaves too. We're just going to blend a bit of the color through. And I'm not going right to the end of any of this. I'm just doing a bit or I'm doing sections of the flowers. Um, because I just want a, a hint of it. I don't need the whole thing to sparkle. If you feel like your Wink of Stella is getting dry, you can take and squeeze it. So there are two little areas here, push and push. I just want you to be careful when you push, your, you, know, you tip it this way and you push, but you can push too hard. And I don't think I can actually push. I don't have the strength. But <laughs> um, if you push too hard, sometimes you can get like a puddle of the ink. Uh, the Wink of Stella ink coming out, so be careful when you do that. You can also pick it back up again, but just push lightly and try not to get frustrated with it or you can really make a mess. <laughs> All right, and then on this one, I'm just gonna, again, put it on my scrap paper in case I had any pretty peacock on there, but on this one, I'm just gonna come up through and do like I did on my Calypso Coral Flowers where I'm just doing some of those middle petals. And see how they, they, they just take on a, a more blended, darker, slightly darker look to them. They look so pretty. But don't just go like that, you guys, because it really, it can, it can make your card look messy when the light's glowing on it in a certain way. Okay, so now that we've colored, we can cap our Wink of Stella and we can start building. So this one here we'll grab first, and I want it to go right along this left side. So I'm gonna take a couple dimensionals, and really dimensionals will hold this all in place, but if you feel like it, you can put adhesive here too, like the seal adhesive or the multi-purpose liquid glue or something like that. I'm also going to give a little bit of a curl onto the ends of these two in that direction and this one in that direction. So let's peel off the backings on our dimensionals and let's set that down so it's almost but not quite to the edge of the white and this stem is running along the, the top part of this layer. Now let's cover that up, but we're gonna do some curling. I'm just gonna curl slightly <laughs> the petals like that. Okay, just on this edge, because it's gonna connect and overlap with that. So let's grab our dimensionals, and you could put them on here too if you want to. So we'll stick a couple down there, peel that off. And now we just have a little bit of that green glow, that pretty peacock green glow right behind. I think I tipped it a little bit, so there's that look. The next one I wanna put on there is this one. So um, let's do the curling of the petals on this side and on this side. And since we're setting it right there, again, I can just take and put my dimensionals right here onto the card base. 
and go like this. And I'm going to tip that one in just slightly, like this one's tipped in that way, this one's tipped in that way. Let's grab one of our double sets of leaves, curl up the end, and this time I'm going to attach it here. So I'm going to use some seal adhesive right underneath the base of the leaves and tuck that up and in like so. Paying attention to where my word is. I don't want my word to get covered up, okay? All right. Next, I'm going to grab a single leaf and we're going to curl the end up slightly. The outside end is the lighter color in this case, so if you're wondering. And I'm just going to set that onto that white layer. A couple more pieces would be these flowers back here. And I'm not going to curl them, they're just going to be more background. So I want a fresh freesia tiny one on one side and another one on the other side. So those will get tucked here and here. On the inside, we're going to add these three. And because we're on the inside of the card, we don't really need to do any bone folding or anything. You don't want to have a lot of dimension on the inside of your card because then it doesn't lie flat. So we're just going to add these straight on. I'm going to put adhesive behind each piece so I can tuck and be ready to go. So for this one, and I'm cheating, I keep looking over at my other one that's finished. For this one here, I want the flower right underneath the words, and I want my leaves to get tucked right about there. There we go. And you have this extra white edge here, this frame, so you can dip off that, that layer if you need to. Okay, now we're gonna come and bring this one in like that. And there's the inside of the card. The inside is finished. Let's do a little bit more to the outside to spruce it up. One of my favorite embellishments is one that I forgot to list on the PDF. Instead, I put iridescent pearls, silly me. These are iridescent pearls. These are iridescent rhinestones. There's a difference. <laughs> so um, let's add, let's just take this sheet out here and we'll grab our take your pick tool because that's easy. We're going to squeeze the, the gummy end here together into a, like a little ball. And we'll start with our medium size. We'll push and lift and grab that one and stick that right next to the word congrats. And I didn't get it right next to the word congrats. So I'm going to use the pokey end <laughs> and get underneath there. You, can, you also have a spatula, by the way. There we go. Now I have it where I want it. We'll take another one that is medium size and stick it into that little section. And now I'm going to grab a couple small ones. Um, this one I'm going to stick over here. And this one I'll put next to the other big one up there, like that. So there is the finished card. Ta-da! So there's the outside and the inside. Let's do the envelope next, okay? You guys ready for that? Really easy. It's really easy. So here is my tip for making any size envelope. We're going to grab the um, trimmer, and we might have to cut down our paper. All right, there we go. La, 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 la. <laughs> okay, our envelope paper that we're going to use for this card is going to use, it's going to be this one this time. I wanted to use a different pattern just to show you different looks that you can get. So for your envelope making, grid paper with lines, a trimmer, and then your actual card. So we need to bring our card back in. And if there's an up or down, which there isn't on this one, yay, um, then you, you set it so that the up is up and the down is down. And we're just going to lay it down like this. Oh, it's way too big. That paper is way too big. So instead, I'm going to bring it up a bit and I'm going to look at my measurements here on my grid paper. And it looks like I can chop off a bit. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm making it in an angle and I just want a little bit extra um, extending beyond the four corners. So if I take and cut like right 
right here, I should be safe. One, two, three, maybe three and a quarter. I should be safe. I'm looking at my measurements. One, two, three inches plus a quarter brings me down about here. And let's see on the other direction. Even if you shimmy this, you can see that you still have some wiggle room. And it it's, doesn't have to be an exact science. So you just shimmy it, put it in where you think it's you know got a good angle, and then you count here. One, two, three. And if you need to bring in a ruler because your grid paper isn't that long, you can certainly do that. And again, about three and a half, about three and a quarter, about let's do three and a quarter. So um, I think in my PDF, I have three and a half cut off of each side, but I'm gonna do three and a quarter just to show you that that size works too. Okay, so let's do three and a quarter. We're trimming off three and a quarter. So now this piece, instead of being eight and a half by eight and a half, it's eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And that is a different amount, a different measurement than what we had in the PDF or in the measurements that are listed in the blog. Okay, now you lay your paper on here again and you can see that you still have this excess beyond each corner of your card. You line up your paper again and here you can use this dark line going through the grid paper and take these two corners, because it's a square, take the two corners and just lay them right on there. And then you can look at um, this card and the top and bottom should be going parallel to the lines on your grid paper. If you need to tip it in one direction or another, that's okay. It doesn't have to be exact again, but it should be close. You don't want it to be like that, okay? All right, so you're laying this down and that looks about right. And now you take and you bring the bottom up, you bring the top down. Literally, this is the easiest type of envelope to make, you guys. You just go like that, fold those up and away, and then you bring the side in and the side in. And you can keep on using the grid paper as a guide to make sure that you're not tilting your paper as you do it. Okay, so I've brought my sides in, I've brought my top and bottom in, and now I just need to decide, am I gonna make an envelope that folds like this with a top flap? Or am I gonna make an envelope that folds like this with a side flap? So either way, it works. I'm choosing to do mine this way. And see this little overlap here in the corners? You want that. That's a good thing. So we're gonna bring that in. We're gonna bring that in. And now we're gonna open it up again because what I'm choosing to do is I want this flap to be on top. Either way will work, as long as you have that overlap, because the overlap is where you put the adhesive. So you can come in here with seal adhesive, you could put um, multi-purpose liquid glue in there, but this is the overlapped area, and that is important for connecting your envelope sides together, okay? The multi-purpose liquid glue will definitely get down into the corners here, then here is where you can choose. You know, do you wanna go on the internet and find some kind of expensive uh, envelope glue or something? <laughs> I'm just gonna take and put more seal adhesive there um, and, and tape it down. And that's how you get your envelope. So I've got that one done. I've got this one done. This one was done with the eight and a half by eight and a half paper. But look, when you fold them all up, they become pretty much the same size. You can do that with any size card that you want. Let's say you wanted to do a square card or a, um, a five by seven or whatever. Um, as long as the paper, when angled into a diamond shape, isn't bigger or isn't smaller than your card. So I mean, literally, we could get a card that is like this size in there, right? You could fit a really big card on there. Um, you'd have to go with bigger paper if you wanted to do that style of envelope with a card that's bigger than that. I hope that works. It's really so casual. You don't have to be um, super intense when you make uh, your own DIY envelopes. It's a, it's a casual thing. Measurements don't have to be exact. So you like the green one better? I do too. I like the green outside. I like this inside though. I think it's um, um, really delicate and sweet. So cool. Thank you, you guys. Okay, we have some prizes to share. So the prizes 
from last week were um, leftover pieces from, um, let me just share them again. Le one of the prizes, because there were some that were picked, but I have some leftover designer paper that I'm not using because I'm done with my Halloween creations. I also have some of that specialty glow in the dark to throw in there, just a couple sheets. Or, so that, that's the Halloween pick. Or if you want some finished cards from a kit, this was done with, I wanna say it was like the Festive Tags kit. I made nine cards from um, those tags. So one set of tags gave me nine cards. So that would be a prize, would be the cards with a set of envelopes. Uh, and then the last prize would be a half of this kit. So two people could win that prize. One person gets one half, the other person gets the other half. It's not a stamp set kit. There's no ink, no stamp set to divide up. It's one of those where you, you literally would get like exact half of the kit, okay? So I'm gonna go to my computer now and I'm going to share with you the names of our after live winners from last week, last week's live. So we had, um, Oh, we have Betty Ann Jackson Kunick, um, who won on Facebook. So thank you so much for joining in, Betty Ann, and you have won one of those prize picks. You need to reach out to me at stampyourartout at comcast.net. The other prize winner for After Live Comments was from YouTube, and that was Judy Trigg. So congratulations to Judy as well. Now I'm going to show you what the prizes are for this week. And there's only, um, there's four of one kind of prize, but then there were, there's one of another kind. So there's still a choice if you win, okay? Measurements for a slim card? Are you talking about an envelope? Because again, you just follow the same thing. I didn't catch whose name it was that had that comment that went through, but, um, but yeah, it's uh, the same type of envelope where you just lay the card on there and then start folding your paper in, you know, trim it up if you need to. You could, um, yeah, well, maybe we'll just do some more envelope making later on in the future. But um, this is the one that I have four of. So I have a tailored expression, expression storage container along with a large and a small blending brush. That's one prize. And then there, um, that one I have four of. This one I only have one of. I have a Wink of Stella plus a set of three daubers. So if you are the first one to pick, you get a choice between the two. Um, we will definitely uh, call out the names of the live winners that, um, that Trisha is announcing soon if she hasn't already, and I bet she has already. So I will have to grab her comment again. Um, oh, there it is. I see it. <laughs> Thanks, Trisha. Live winners are Marilyn Bird and Brandy with an I. Congratulations to you two. Um, so make sure again that you reach out to me, Marilyn Bird and Brandy reach out to me at my email address at stampyourartout at comcast.net. We have some announcements before I go. Um, yes, congratulations to the winners. Oh, by the way, if you're a winner and you live out of the US, uh, I can't technically mail you a product prize, but I can let you choose from one of my online tutorials. And that option is for anybody. So if you'd rather not have product, maybe you have enough product, maybe you'd rather get a set of um, 12 video class tutorial type things. Let me know if that's what you'd rather choose. This little pumpkin here is to remind me that uh, I'm participating in the Stamp Out Breast Cancer um, event and it's online and in person. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to my computer here and pull up some stuff for you so that you can see this. Um, I'm going to my website at Stamp Your Art Out at Comcast, I'm sorry, stampyourartout.com. Sorry, I was reading my email all of a sudden. Stamp your art out at Comcast. Uh, that's my email again, stampyourartout.com. <laughs> and we're gonna, just gonna go to, um, we're gonna go to the latest blog post, which was cards that I shared from Rose. Rose Carey, thank you, Rose. Okay, when you're here, we're gonna scroll down and there is some information right here about all the different promotions. It's always at the bottom of my blog post. So if you go here and you click on, um, let's see here, stay tuned for the in-person event, layering leaves. I'm gonna click here and see if this takes me to the, oh, here, there is the in-person event. So um, there's an in-person event being held in Drakett, Massachusetts. Sorry that I said Maryland last week. I apologize for that. 
Um, but this event is being run by Stampin' Up! Um, demonstrators, and um, there is a donation slash entry fee, but um, a lot of the proceeds, uh, I, I believe that all of them, um, even for the entry fee at the door, uh, are going towards the um, American Cancer Society. I've also got a link on my blog post, so there you can read all the information about that event. It's going to be held in Massachusetts on October 28th. I'm going to have more information soon on how you can register for that if you'd like to. But here is a link to the actual donation portion um, section where you can donate towards Stamp Out Breast, breast Cancer. Um, I am designing uh, a card with my Layering Leaves stamp set that's going to be contributed to the tutorial gift that donators, if you have a, a minimum donation, you get a tutorial bundle um, using the Layering Leaves stamp set. And all these people are designing with it and making these great card creations. I'm going to be adding one of my tutorials to it as well. Um, they invited me to come out to the event because that's the stamp set that I um, created as my Million Achiever stamp set, the Layering Leaves stamp set. So. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it work with marching band season, but um, my heart is there with them, and I'm so excited, hoping that we raise some some money to go towards breast cancer research and all of the other goodies that American Cancer Society um, helps fight cancer, uh, breast cancer, with um, with those donations. So, not just research. If you look at the um, the wording it's it's amazing where all that money goes towards and and what we need the money for so all right so i'm gonna let you all go it's well past 12. sorry about that you guys thank you to lisa and trisha for sticking in there with me and being my moderators during this time the next time oh one more thing that i want to mention there is a great um, starter kit offer right now for if you want to be a discount shopper with Stampin' Up! products and you don't want to be buying from myself or other people and you want to get it from yourself only at a discount there's a great kit offer that's also found on my blog on my website in the promotions area it's called 35 for 35 you can either do or 35 or 35 you can do 35 off the kit or 35 percent more in product all right on that note let's sign out the next time i'm going to go live is next week and we're going to go back to wednesdays again sorry about the change this week you guys but thank you for being with me i love that you were with me and it was fun to hear to see all the comments rolling in hand is healing for those of you that missed my initial comments on that um wednesday october 23rd at 11 a.m central time i hope that i'll see you there thank you so much everybody now i'd like you all to go and stamp your art out Bye-bye.